Greetings, I am Tom Earl, and this is my year of balance. Have you ever said yes to too many things and started to feel like you've overcommitted yourself? Have you ever hung out with that person who they're here, but they're not really here because they're answering their phone and they're checking their email and they're calling somebody? Have you ever said yes to a meeting that you knew you weren't going to be on time for? but you just said yes because you didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings or you wanted to please somebody. Yes, indeed, my friends. This is something that whatever I do, executive coaching or strategic planning or talk to friends or in any of the classes I work on with for productivity and time management, this is a big one that always comes up and it's around learning how to say no. Ooh, this is one that we go in a lot on. How do we make sure that we're saying yes to what really matters and learning how to consistently say no to the things that are important, that we care about, that we want to support, but are outside of our scope of ability to do? This is the thing that happens when you say yes to everything, when you say yes to things that you really can't give your 100% to, but we're just saying yes to out of obligation or for whatever reason, your yes starts to mean less. How many times have you had that person who they say yes to you, but you know that they've said yes to 100 other people? So chances are they're either going to be late, they're going to cancel, or they're going to completely forget about it. So you pencil them in, but you know their yes means less. And if this is us, when we start to do this, when we say yes to everything, whether it's because we want to be please the person or we feel we have to, it might be that one opportunity, we start to eat away at our yes to where our less goes from meaning less to our yes means nothing because we don't really mean yes. There's so many times where I've scheduled a meeting with a client or with somebody I'm interviewing and I ask them what time can we meet and they really don't know how to answer that question. So they give me a time and inevitably they're late or they don't show up or they reschedule a hundred times and I learn and everybody who works with them learn their yes doesn't actually mean yes, it means less. So that's one reason to cultivate ability to say no. Here's another one. If you don't choose, someone else will choose for you. If you don't choose, someone else will choose for you. So if you don't know how to say no, if you don't know how to decide between what can I really commit to, what can I actually, what project can I take on, what meeting can I schedule, what new endeavor can I accept, if you don't learn how to say no and to say yes to what really matters, other people are going to decide that for you. It could be through text messaging they constantly eat at your time, through email, through all these other things. So what we want to do is you want to choose what you're spending your time on. You want to choose what projects you're doing. The only way you can choose is not just by saying yes but cultivating a strong sense of no. So let's say you're buying into this. I agree, Tom. How do I do that? What are my steps to getting a good no? The first thing is decide what really matters. If you know what matters, you know what you should be saying yes to, and you know what you should be saying no to. It doesn't mean that when you say no to something that they don't matter, that they're not important, but it means for you what really matters in terms of your vision and mission. This is the first place to start. Do you know what your company's vision and mission is? What's your personal business? What your personal goals are in your relationships and your health and your finance? Do you have a vision and a mission for what that is? Secondly, once you have your vision and mission, do you have priorities? So many people, when they say what matters and I have them list out what their priorities are, They'll try to tell me that they have four number one priorities. The thing about a priority is you can only have number one, number two, number three. You can have, you have to list them. If you have a hundred different number ones, you don't know how to say no. So what is your vision? What is your mission? And what is the priority? Anything that falls outside of that scope should be a no. And when you don't say no to it, you start to have mission creep. You start to be saying yes to things that aren't really things you should be saying yes to. Your yes starts to mean less and you start to accomplish less and less and be less effective. 
Let's talk about this on an emotional aspect. Check this person out. Bronnie Ware. I read this in a book called Essentialism, which is an excellent book. And she talked about she works with people in their last 12 weeks of their life. So just before they die. And she's recorded people's number one regret. And their number one regret that they say is that they didn't have the courage to live as their true self and instead lived based upon other people's expectations. So often we feel guilty saying no. We feel like we're going to hurt somebody's feelings. We, we want to be a good person. We want to be liked. We want to be there for people. So we say yes, even though we know it's a no. And when that happens, we start to live our lives based upon other people's agendas and expectations. And we know that that's not what ruins relationships. What ruins relationships is when we're inauthentic and it slowly starts to eat away at us until next thing we know, we just can't take it anymore. So instead, we want to have a mantra. We want to turn that regret into a mantra, which says, I have the courage to live life. I have the courage to live a true life true to myself, not the life others expect from me. It's hard to read it in reverse. <laughs> this can be your mantra. This can be your inspiration on saying no. Living a life true to yourself starts with learning how to say no to what's not in that. And saying no doesn't make you a bad person. You know what you find whenever I do strategic planning or I work one-on-one -on -one with big level executives or CEOs is that People start to respect when you say no, because they know that you are focused on what really matters. It starts to give your team direction. It starts to give those around you direction on what really matters and how can I support you in that. I've seen so many people where I've worked one-on-one -on -one with them, whether it was through a strategic plan or executive coaching, where they refused to do this. And so what they do is they overcommit, they overcommit and they water down their impact less and less their yes starts to mean less next thing you know they ran their life in terms of their energy and vitality into the ground and their company as well so this is something that is so important to learn so if you're wondering what are some ways that i can cultivate my yeses what are some ways that i can have a strong no we're going to continue to explore that and what I'd like to invite you to do is to jump on the podcast with me. Every single one of these videos has a podcast that goes a little more in depth. These videos are about five to 10 minutes long as a, a little teaser, a little intro for you. But the podcasts are about a half hour long and they go more in depth. So what we're going to cover on the podcast is five ways that we undermine our no and strategies for us to have a rocking no, an awesome no. I myself practice my nose in the mirror. I look in the mirror and I say, no, I would love to help you, but I can't in that way. What's another way I can support you? No, I'm not able to do that. I apologize, but I would love to send other resources your way. Some no's, honestly, like hate mail, when I get hate mail, I used to try to answer the haters <laughs> with love and compassion, every single one of them, but some people just don't even care. They do not care about your time. They do not care about dialogue. They're not interested in the mission. Some people you just don't even give a response to. And you find that you start to have time more for what matters. And the, the people who don't really care, they start to realize that you actually mean it when you say yes or no. So we, I'd love to continue this conversation with you through the podcast. Jump on that. You can find that at tomearl.com slash no, N-O, tomearl.com slash N-O. You can search on iTunes. Tom Earl and then search The Celebration or go to TomEarl.com slash podcast. My friends, it has been an absolute pleasure talking with you today. Let me know what you think. Drop in the comments below. And as always, wishing you peace and blessings. Oh, oh, one, one more thing. I'd love to continue the conversation. Feel free to join me at TomEarl.com slash join. Subscribe below or let's connect on social media. Tom Earl Artist. Thanks again for watching.